It's hard to believe that we're getting towards the last several weeks of winter. Spring 2022 on the horizon. But before we get to that, some snow showers moving through the Midwest and the Great Lakes. We'll give you the state borders. Sometimes it's fun to see the maps without borders, but it does get a little bit confusing. Very nice day across much of the country, clear skies up and down the east coast, all the way back into the southwestern U.S. and even up into the Pacific Northwest, unless you're in the southern Willamette Valley or Seattle, where we do have some fog and stratus. And there's the surface analysis for today. An old frontal boundary still hanging on down there around the Bahamas and the Florida Keys, but a fresh outbreak of cold air coming down. We saw that on the satellite image with that cloud field up there in the Great Lakes. And behind it, some strong cold air advection. Only 30s, 40s, and 50s in the central U.S., but in the Dakotas, falls rapidly into the single digits and teens. In southern Illinois, we have what's called a triple point. That's the junction between warm air a fresh invasion of cold air, and some outgoing cold air north of the warm front. That triple point does become the most favored area for new cyclogenesis. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but that would be something to watch. And we can see the effects of cold air damming in the Appalachians. Still a little bit of cold air hanging on in Kentucky and Ohio. The warm air having a lot of trouble crossing the Appalachians due to this blocking effect. So the cold air stays in place in this region, and we get this lopsided warm front appearance. Typically, we would see a dry line down there in Texas in early spring, but we don't have that today because the air mass is completely dry. 30s, 40s dew points all the way from San Antonio to Atlanta. So we're not going to draw anything in this region. The western U.S., a little bit of fog in the valleys, a somewhat cool air mass covering the Great Basin area, but very warm conditions on the west coast. It's a little bit early in the day as we record this, so we're nowhere near the afternoon highs, but Burbank coming up to 80 degrees, 82 there in the Inland Empire, and 86 at Palm Springs. And you can get some idea of what the forecast highs are going to be today. We are expecting 90 degrees. All of this is the official human-produced forecast. This is not model guidance. And we're expecting to see 70s in the San Joaquin Valley, except up near Redding, a little bit of adiabatic downslope warming, bringing the temperatures up to 87, and that will break a record. Moving on to the Pacific, it looks like there is a frontal boundary lurking out here. Some much colder temperatures in the mid and upper levels out to the west. And that's supporting a weak boundary, but not really any precip associated with that. Further up to the north, we're breaking down that high pressure area. A new system coming into the Gulf of Alaska. And as we go into the Alaskan interior, yeah, that is Arctic air. Minus 44 at Fort Yukon. Does look a little bit warmer than what we had yesterday or Wednesday. We were seeing minus 45 in this area here. That's come up substantially. So we've eroded some of that cold air and replaced it with some Pacific air, which has moved in through the mid-levels and mixed down to the surface. Still quite cold in northern Canada this afternoon almost minus 40 at Victoria Island, and some very cold readings at some of these stations in central Nunavut. Quiet out in the Atlantic. One little weather system there south of Iceland, and a fresh periclinic system moving into the Labrador Sea. You can see some gusty winds in the wake of that. 35 knots there in Labrador. And a little bit of freezing rain being reported in far eastern Quebec. So we did see those temperature records for this afternoon. And we can't forget New York City, Islip, coming up to 57 this afternoon. That's approaching the record, but not breaking it. 
Moving into tomorrow, continued warm in California. However, a few warm readings also showing up in Connecticut. The heat starts to back off a little bit on Sunday. And even further for Monday on Valentine's Day. So this is probably a good time to dabble a bit with infrared imagery. Let's take a closer look at this. We do see some much lighter colors in the southwestern U.S. That is not a meteorological signature. That's just where the enhancement scheme is programmed to jump to a different color band. And all that's doing is it's ensuring that this area just doesn't get painted black with warm temperatures. The colder cloud tops, they're found in the Midwest, and you can see this S shape on the back of the seriform cloud. That's a good indicator of a upper level system. Typically, your short waves will be positioned somewhat like that. If we look at the Q vector charts, yeah, we do kind of find that short wave right there. So that's going to go from just east of Des Moines down towards Tulsa and the Upper lift located just ahead of it. And that does kind of get us in the ballpark. That wave was being indicated like that on the GFS Q vector charts. The stronger motion out in this area, it's possible that the vertical motion field has outrun the models a little bit. But I do still see some stratiform elements right there in Illinois. It could just be that the air mass is too dry to support much of a cloud field. This area of clouds further back in Colorado, Wyoming, Montana, that's also likely to be correlated with a shortwave passing through that area. Don't see much of a structure appearing on satellite. But returning to the Q vector fields, yeah, there's most definitely a shortwave right there. Western Wyoming down to Salt Lake City. The vertical motion, the upward vertical motion, located right there in the central part of Wyoming. And if we run this forward, we can see the progression of that short wave moving towards Denver, the Texas Panhandle, and into Texas for tomorrow. It's actually carving out a nice trough in the height field, which means on the forecast panels, we can track that field as it moves southeast. So that's going to produce some snow showers tomorrow morning around Lubbock and Roswell and some rain in Texas on the backside of this frontal system. Now let's take a look at weather around your part of the country. The southwestern U.S. clear. Some haze was indicated by the ASAW stations around Bakersfield. And aside from the hot weather, there's just not much going on. Working our way north, we do get into some of the cooler air. You can see the snow fields in northern Nevada have not melted yet. And the snow fields in Idaho, still there. Some stratus and fog in the Snake River Valley. And more of that fog and stratus as you get up towards Salem and Eugene. Much the same around Portland and Seattle. Most of the clouds we're seeing are in the low levels. Right there, some coastal clouds, and you can see a little bit of a vortex right there south of Quileut. Very small scale circulation and a little bit of high cloud traversing the area. And we can see that's only associated with some weak vertical motion, if anything. Lots of subsidence across the Bitterroot Range. In Montana, we get on the backside of that short wave. Very unsettled. This is indicating instability in the mid-levels, so snow showers are common, especially down here around Billings. Some more snow showers up there near Miles City. The snow showers approaching Denver, they're reporting 32 degrees there with snow. And you can see further east, although it's drier in the low levels, there are some Alt Cumulus Castellanus and some elevated Cumulus Towers north of I-70. South Dakota, North Dakota, back there in the cold air, single digits, and teens, and a very significant snow band coming down from 
eastern North Dakota into Minnesota. Working our way back south, a nice stay in Oklahoma and Kansas, but that lift approaching from the north. And a nice day in Texas as well. You can actually make out the city right there. That's Dallas and Houston showing up right there. Florida is on the back side of that frontal system down to the south. So some showers being reported there around Miami. And we do have a short wave from southern Alabama south into the Gulf producing some showers. There's the Midwest region starting to pick up that front, the cold air coming south, and some actual shallow cumulonimbus clouds. We've had some heating there. You can see the clear skies, kind of a clear slot there, just enough instability and cold temperatures in the mid-levels to get some convection forming. The radar imagery not really showing any precepts, so most likely that's producing Virga. And the surface plots not showing very much in Illinois either. But back behind it, man, some gusty winds. Lots of plots here showing 40 knot gusts. So Iowa, not a very pleasant place to be this afternoon. Looking good in the mid-Atlantic coast region this afternoon. The northeastern U.S. very nice as well, but changes are on the way. Big Rig Travels, one of my favorite sites for live views of the sky from a truck located there east of Des Moines, near Grinnell, Iowa, heading westbound for Salt Lake City. And there's the view from the truck. That is Stratocumulus. That's cold air advection Stratocumulus. We're looking west. And I can see just a very faint trace of some snow coming out of those clouds. Let's check it out on the satellite. So he's going to be located in this area right there. You can see the cloud streets. The satellite's got a very cold appearance on the backside of that system. Very whitish, hazy appearance. And one thing I like to do is head over to Pivotal Weather Go into that high resolution rapid refresh, drop a sounding right on Big Rig Travels Air. And uh, there's the picture. That's going to be the zone of cold air advection down in the mid levels, the top of the front on version. Right about there, that's going to be up at about 8,000 feet. So above that, that's actually a tropical air mass. If we bring that down, kind of as a mix of dry. And wet adiabatic, the wet adiabatic's not plotted on here, but don't worry about that. We're going to come down about like that. So if this was kind of a normal stagnant air mass, we'd see temperatures pretty close to 50 degrees. And that's what we would see on a warm day in Iowa in February. And you can see the very steep lapse rates right off the surface. The humid conditions, the dew point and temperature are very close together. And that's the reason we are getting that stratocumulus. It's forming right in there. Let's just take a quick run through of our forecast charts. There's our front coming south, the big ridge, pushing that cold air down into the central U.S. Over the weekend, the cold air spreads into the northeast U.S. and the southern U.S., not quite into Florida and the Carolinas. This is going to be Saturday night, Little low pressure system moving off the east coast, a little bit too far east to produce much in the way of weather in New York and Boston, but cold air coming in in the wake. There's the big ridge and another Alberta clipper developing up to the north late on Sunday. So another dry incursion of cold air coming south, rapid return of return flow. So it's going to warm up quite a bit by Tuesday. A Pacific system coming in, that's new. That's it right there. Some snow showers there in Nevada and California, and it moves across the Rockies and emerges late in the week around Texas and Oklahoma. We talked about the possibility for storms due to that active southern stream, and that's exactly what's happening. And cold air is positioned up to the north. And eventually that cold air does spread south. A snow track from Kansas up to Chicago and Milwaukee. And storms marching eastward across the southeastern U.S. So this could be one of our 
early chances for tornadoes. We'll have to see. That's still a ways out. And looks quiet, fair weather on the weekend of the 20th. And possibly some more weather coming in from the west on the following week, but that's too far out. And I hope you enjoyed this edition of Forecast Lab. I want to thank all of our supporters. People like Brock Austin, Eddie Holmes, Stephen Kondrak, Alexander Williams, Michael O'Neill, Austin Haig. People like you, thank you very much for contributing and helping to support the program. We'll see our Patreon supporters back here on Monday for the private video. If you want to get in on that, check the description of this program, and that'll show you the Patreon link to go to. Otherwise, we'll see you back here on Wednesday. Take care. Bye-bye.